My brother was my hero. But my earliest recollection is really going to the races and going to watch Benny. Benny's probably the last championship driver that came from, you might say, the working ranks of American males. He had driven a taxi for his dad and worked on cars, and he, he was just like a common worker. I was about 15, 16 years old in 1973, and uh, Benny's team, owned by LG Dewitt, was all about consistency. They didn't have quite the budget that some of the other teams did. So it was all about finishing races and obviously finishing well. They had a great start to the season in 73 on through the summer. We get to the last race of the season and we were leading the points going into Rockingham. We run about 12 or 13 laps and we're involved in a crash. The DeWitt team, they had just enough people to race. They didn't have enough people to stop and build race cars. So they had an outlet like Texas Company to, to build the race cars that knew what they were doing. In that time, if you had a wreck, you were eligible to repair your car and continue. And Benny was such a well-liked person that several teams instructed their extra people to come down and help us. So there were just a lot of people that knew what they were doing that dove in on the thing and we got it in a safe state to where he could go back out and uh, complete enough laps to uh, win the championship. Tom Williams, he ends up buying this car and campaigns it in the uh, USAC and ARCA series. Then he sold the car. In a conversation that I had with him maybe eight years ago, he commented that he knew where some of the old cup cars were. Looked for it for about a year and found it. And he sent me some pictures of it. And I was very surprised to see that it was the championship car. Tom Williams brings the car to North Carolina and uh, the group of us that had built the car originally uh, got back together and then spent, uh, it took us about 11 months to restore it. They took a lot of pains to find, you know, some of the original parts that came off that car. And you're talking about, you know, 40 years before that. So it's, it's amazing that that car looks exactly like it did in 1973. There's not many cars that there's only one of that participated in a championship, especially back in those years. And this was a, a celebrated championship. It was Benny's only championship. There's just not hardly any cars that fit in this category. You know, Benny had a tremendous career on the racetrack. He, you know, he had 21 wins. He won the Daytona 500 in 1975 won the championship in 1973. That's where this car came from. But what was really neat is he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, not only because I don't think because of his driving accomplishments, but once he got out of the race car, I mean, he was really truly an ambassador to the sport. Looking towards the future, it'll serve Benny and the, and the industry better if somebody is able to put this in a museum and tell the story behind it. You can't walk through the garage area and talk to anybody that knew Benny that didn't love Benny because he just, he just meant the world to everybody, cared about everybody deeply. So I think that would be probably his legacy is that he was, he was one of the really, really good guys and, and, a, and a friend to everybody.